Mark Bunker, 803 North Keene Road. Today is the 18th anniversary of the death of Lisa McPherson. Lisa was a dedicated Scientologist who tragically died in Scientology's Fort Harrison Hotel, basically right across the street from here. Shortly after reaching the Scientology status of clear, Lisa suffered a psychotic break, and she was held against her will at the Fort Harrison for the final 17 days of her life. During that time, Lisa's condition rapidly grew worse. The people assigned to watch Lisa 24 hours a day were not at all qualified for the job. In fact, many of them couldn't even speak English. But that really didn't matter because L. Ron Hubbard decreed that if you're watching over somebody with a psychotic break, you can't talk to them. So basically, Lisa McPherson was locked in a room, hallucinating, barking like a dog, thinking she herself was L. Ron Hubbard and smearing her feces on the wall while people who, were, who wouldn't speak to her were forcing medication down her throat with a turkey baster. By the end of those 17 days, Lisa had lost 40 pounds and uh, was in such horrible condition that Scientology, rather than calling an ambulance, decided to throw her in a van and drive her to a hospital several towns away where there was a Scientologist doctor on duty. And by the time they arrived, Lisa was dead. I understand the city is thinking about finding a better way to work with Scientology and sitting down and mending fences with David Miscavige, the current leader. I'd ask you to remember that when Scientology was criminally charged in Lisa's case, case, Scientology didn't bat an eye before destroying key evidence in the case and whisking people out of the country before they could be questioned by the police. For the past couple of years, Scientology has been harassing the former second-in-command of Scientology, Marty Rathbun, and his wife, Mosey. They spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to harass these two people, and they lied about it to the media, to the police, and to the courts. And it only was after David Miscavige was personally added to the case that Scientology said, oh, all right, well, we did it. We're behind it. We paid for it all. It was our, it was our, uh, uh, you know, our assignment. Um, I'm all for communicating. But if you want to talk to somebody, don't talk to David Miscavige. Talk to Marty Rathbun or talk to Mike Rinder, who was another former high executive in the church who lives in this area. Scientology has been systematically breaking up families through their policy of disconnection, emptying parishioners' bank accounts, and coercing women to have abortions so that they don't slow down in their work for Scientology. I know it's a lot easier to turn a blind eye to the way Scientology behaves, but it's not the right thing to do. On this date every year, people all around the world turn their attention to Lisa McPherson and to the city of Clearwater. I'd ask you to help those people who have been victims of Scientology. Thank you, sir.